talk about the ballistic missile trajectory. And before doing that one, I would like to give you certain terminologies. So here, this is our Earth's surface. And this is the center here. And for ballistic missiles, and they launch, in, uh, they basically consist of three stages. So say if this is the launching site, then they uh, have a first stage, they call the power flight. So the power flight is to boost the, uh, the rocket and to the height, a uh, certain, height, uh, certain uh, altitude, okay, and, and then with the certain enough um, the velocity, so in this way, they, at a the certain point, once they reach the key um, position and velocity, they turn off the engines. So here it's called the burnout. Either they turn off the engine or they release the first stage. And the burnout, that means they enter into the second uh, stage, they call the free flight. The free flight, basically, at this moment, we have a burnout positions. Burnout, and we have the burnout velocities. So in this way, with the two things, we can calculate the orbital elements. So the free flight is So the free flight is uh, in uh, um, determined. Orbit. Because using at the burnout position velocity, we can calculate the orbital element. So the stage two is predictable uh, trajectory. That means anything, if we want to strike off the, uh, the missiles, then the best chance is in the stage two, because that everything predictable. Okay. And to this <coughs> stage, then they call the re-entry. Once, usually they take up the re-entry a certain point, once they back to the atmosphere again, the air drag and the other, um, the um, information is what other factors going to affect the uh, the flying path of the missile. So here, in once they get into reentry, they will activate the they using the guidance or activate control to guidance the missile to somewhere. So that is uh, the the hitting part destination. So this is a stage three. <coughs> They call the uh, the reentry. Okay. So uh, with this information here, then uh, then you can see this is the predictable uh, the trajectory. So here we have three stages. So let me do this measurement. Sorry, my drawing is not so good, but that should be a straight line. So this is an angle. And let me call the free flight angle, and this is another angle, and I call the power flight angle, and this is the another angle that called the re-entry angles here. Okay, so in total, um, So the total growth <coughs> range, and we define as the side T, T means total, and that ground range, and here is a terminology here, the ground range, that means the distance uh, from the launching, this one is the first one, then the second one is this, this one, the third one is this one. So basically the total ground range will be determined by Oh my goodness, uh, RT, that should be R, okay, distance, should be equal to the R, the first one is the burnout stage, plus the second <coughs> one, let me use this one, 
So this one is the burnout. The second one is the free flight. The third one is the re-entries. Okay. So this one is very simple. Uh, the addition of the geometries and re-entries. And this one actually can be determined by we simply uh, multiply the radius of the Earth to each angle. Okay. So that one, if you like, you can say that is the rate. Um, multiply with V, B O plus V flight plus V re-entry. That's it. And here for the name uh, is we defined is give a certain name. That is, this is called the, um, the um, Sorry, the P. That's called the power uh, flight range ING angle. And this one is called the free flight uh, range angle. And this one is called the re. Uh, entry range angle. Okay, so those one are the terminologies we're going to communicate through our exercise, through our exam, and through the, uh, the our homework. Okay, and in this chapters we will be focused on the free flight because that is uh, the topic can uh, link into our determined orbit. As far as the uh, power flight and range, that will be the different stories from different classes. Okay, I believe the aerodynamics will be more covering the range things. For the power flight, and unfortunately, there's no such curriculum in our school, and maybe proportions uh, can provide you a little bit about these things, hopefully, okay. So, so here again, our focus will be more on the uh, free flight. Okay, pay attention to here. Um, so the first one I want to give is the first equation is called the free flight. Range <coughs> equations. And let me write out the equation first and then give you explanations. Cosine V over 2. If you want to determine the V of right, um, textbook uh, things I our textbook using the notations I simply give you this notation our textbook using our notate the notation is this and Omega for this and then lambda capital lambda for this so those are the corresponding notation using in our textbook I didn't use it because this one going to confuse with our um, one of the orbital elements parameters so here in this way uh, uh, yeah, so I'm going to use is using this notation here. So hopefully that can avoid any confusion. So this one is equal to one minus q cosine square b o and one plus q q minus q cosine square b o. So here, let me give you the explanations. The Q is a scalar, uh, is a dimensionless uh, parameters.
and that one by definition is this uh, um, <coughs> simply give it. Okay, so simply that is a magnitude of the burnout information as we we'll listed here. And Q is a parameter that actually, um, okay, and that is the parameter here. And the VBO is called the uh, flight path angle at burnout. So uh, we can make one example here. So if this is the Earth, and if this is the burnout uh, point, okay. So here, this is our center of the Earth. So um, so basically, <coughs> this is our RBO. And this is our VBO. So the burn up, uh, the fly path angle basically is here. We define our local horizon. The local horizon is seen is in this way. At the burn up point, you simply draw a line that is normal to that position. This is the normal position. Then this angle is called the VBO, the burn out uh, fly path angle. Okay, so back to the uh, Northern uh, Korean, they fire the launch, they the launch the ballistic missiles in this way because they have to shoot into the sky very, very high. So in that situation, the VBO must be very large. Otherwise, if they keep the VBO small, then basically that's why K can go very long range. Okay, so that's one example to this one. So this is the, uh, the problem for this. So that means as long as we say, we determine, as long as we know the, uh, the R, if we know the position of the burnout, and if we know the velocity at the burnout, so that we can uh, calculate Q. And then if we can determine the VBO, then basically we can determine the range angle by this. So that means as long as we know the, the certain key parameters at the burnout, then we can determine how far that missile can reach, okay? So that's called the, the, these equations. And the derivation of this one um, won't be so straight, uh, won't be hard. And we can try is this, so one, so that's a derivation. <coughs> So for the derivation, simply this Q is the uh, definition, so nothing much to say. So here, uh, let me say, Q actually uh, is defined by uh, any velocity divided by uh, the mu over R squared. So why I say so, uh, this one basically is V squared divided by V circular um, circular speed. So if you remember, uh, this this is the speed, constant speed when an object is in the circular orbit. Okay, so that is a, in, this is the constant cruising speed in the circular orbit, in the square, okay. So simply we compare whatever the speed to the circular speed, then we have the information here. So when Q equal to one, that means this is the at uh, local circular speed. When k uh, q equal to two, and this one is this at an escape speed. 
escape speed that back to our chapter one. That means once you launch it, it will going to uh, skip away from the gravitational drag from the um, uh, the uh, Earth, for example. Okay, Q equal to three uh, greater than two. So that is the uh, uh, at uh, hyper hyperbolic uh, orbit. Okay, so that means if the the um, the queue is so large, then once you launch it, then it, the things will never back to the Earth. It's just shooting into alien. Okay, so so that is the one. So usually for uh, the things coming back to for ballistic uh, missile applications, usually you can see we have to confirm the queue is uh, in the range of. Um, the one or smaller, okay, and no, sorry, the two or smaller, okay, because this one at the escape speed basically the same. This is on parabolic orbit. Parabolic orbit is an open orbit, and they won't be back, okay. So, for the practical application, they have to design the uh, the um, the parameters and the rocket parameters such that Q is less than two, okay. So that's the first thing. So then the second thing is we know the total energy E, and that is V squared over two minus mu over R. <coughs> and this one is also equal to um, mu minus two A. So from here we can uh, calculate uh, the relation between A and Q. So that means using the two equations, and uh, we can try is um, this um, from here uh, the v square. Maybe I can rewrite here. So um, using this one. So maybe I can rewrite here. Um, not important, but anyhow. Using the two equations from here, we can see the Q equal to V squared R times by, by mu. So here we can see V squared equal to Q mu divided by R. Okay, so therefore here I can introduce the mu, the V squared equal to Q mu divided by R and Q. So I introduce V squared by this term to here and minus mu over r and equal to mu over minus 2a. So with these equations, we can find is q equal to 2 minus r over a, or a equal to r minus 2 minus q, either way. So that means, as long as, the, because the q is the information, uh, the burnout information here. So if you have the r and v, you, and you can calculate q, and once your Q is known, then you can directly determine the semi-major axis A using these equations. Okay. So that information will provide us a very quick access and just for knowing A, then we can use this one. Okay, so that reason I'm kind of keep saying the key parameters at the burnout positions, at the burnout information there, but position velocity, that is both the two key parameters for for uh, most of the things there. And I believe that should be the two parameters uh, the agencies of the United States and other countries that try to collect whenever the, any country they have a, uh, they call it ICBM, uh, Intercontinental ballistic missile launch, they are trying to collect the most important parameters in the two here. So right now we have those kind of preparations, and now I want to begin to derive this one. So let me get rid of this portion. So starting from is from the orbital equations, we know the R equal to uh, P uh, R, 1 plus E cosine mu. So that is our orbital equations. So using the orbital equations, and we can say at the burnout, we can apply, so RBO will be equal to P 
T, 1 plus E times cosine nu, and that as the B O here. Okay, so from here there, we can have the new B O and equal to P minus R B O and E R B O. And for this case, because the center is also work as the uh, the major focus, so from let me draw that one here again. <coughs> So from here, basically, this is to constitute uh, a portions of whatever the orbit. You can see the certain portion is digging into the Earth, but that is not our interest. Our interest is only on the free flight portions here. So here we can uh, dig into our concept. So here you can see this is the position at the, uh, the burnout. So if this is the uh, periapsis, you see this is our definition of the mu B O, right? That is the, the true anomaly measured from the perigee of the orbit. And this one is what we define <coughs> as the half of the free flight uh, range angles. So from here you can see this way basically uh, the half of the feet plus mu v o and equal to pi. So we can introduce the information here. So therefore, cosine <coughs> phi f f divided by two will be equal to cosine pi minus mu v o, right? And this number actually equal to um, minus cosine mu v o. Okay, and right now we can use this information here. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, this is cosine. Okay, because here we have this one. Okay. Sorry, here I forgot that it should be cosine here. A typo? I forgot to write cosine, so fill it up in your information. Good? Okay. So in this way, uh, we can have plug in here, so that for each one <coughs> equal to minus E minus R B O and E times R B O. Okay. So almost there. So we asking for cosine of that half of the free flight range. And now we almost down there. So basically, as long as I can simplify the right the right hand side to there, we done this job. Be good. Okay. So I'm going to keep writing to here. So let me put it where P and E are a functions of Q and V, B, O. Okay, so the remaining is I'm going to show you what is the function of the PME. So here, um, P equal to H squared divided by uh, mu. Okay, and H is the our angular momentum. We can utilize the information here. So for here, you can see the H is simply using the information is RBO times VBO times cosine phi and square. That is our angular momentum. Okay, so and PBO. So that is, let me write it out here, RBO, VBO, cosine, VBO, square, divided by mu, 
Okay, and right now you can see here has R squared V something, mu squared something. So here I can uh, introduce in the notation of the Q. So basically that is R Q times cosine squared DPO. Okay, and here using those kind of observations, I introduce the Q to here. We have this one. And now for E. Because here we know the P equal to A times E1 minus E squared. So therefore we know the E equal to um, 1 minus P over A squared. Okay, with this information so we already have is P equal to, again, RBO times Q times cosine squared VBO. And then for A, we already have is, where is A? Um, I erased it. Let me write it up again. A equal to R uh, 2 minus Q. Okay, so basically for E, we have this one. Okay, so E, we plug into here. P have this one. So everything we plug back into here, then we can have this information. So here we simply is a simple application of what we have done in chapter one and two. And this will be the first useful information. And I'm going to give you the explanation of how to utilize this. So for example, here we can um, So say here we have the magnitude of the VBO, say uh, 0 0.926 Q <coughs> and RBO equal to 1.05 DU. And 1.5 DU, that means the uh, altitude of the burnout from the Earth's surface <coughs> is 0 0.05 DU. 0 0.05 DU is 120th. Uh, about 300 kilometers above this, above the uh, the surface. Okay. Uh, the VBO equal to 10 degrees, <coughs> and then we can calculate uh, the. So therefore, using this information, we can determine the RFF will be equal to um, 1.763. <coughs> Seven uh, radian. So this is a very simple uh, application. So in this way, if you want to determine the RFF, the RFF is the range, which means how far it can travel. And you can simply uh, using this one times. This is a race, uh, the 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 uh, radius of the Earth. Okay, so that is uh, say using. Um, how about using the okay so either you can use the first radius uh, I think is three four four um, three point nine um, nautical miles. Also, that can be equal to 63, um, that is 6378. If I'm going to uh, double check this number, okay. And also that is 1DU, right? So whatever the unit you put into here, then you can determine the, the range. And given for this one, I think this one, um, is more than 6,300. So given this information, that is the shooting range uh, is more than 10,000 from the burnout to here to here. Okay, so this is a very uh, straightforward application.